Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs and back to our Playwright TypeScript series. In this video, we are going to talk about one very interesting feature of Playwright that is auto-weight feature or auto-weighting. So how exactly Playwright works with respect to auto-weight? We don't need to write any specific uh, implicitly weight or explicitly weight that we write in Selenium. Like sleep, static weight also we can write in Selenium. But here, for every action that you're performing on the element, either it is a element related action, either it is a page specific action or browser specific action, auto weight feature is already there. So Playwright performs a range of actionability checks on the element before making any action to ensure that these actions behave as expected. What kind of action? Like dot click, dot check, and whatever, if you have uh, filling the values also or anything. In fact, for the screenshot also, it is going to wait for that. That element is properly visible or not or page is properly visible or not. For example, let's say locator.click I really want to perform. Remember, it could be important for interview point of view also that what are the different things internally it checks before performing the dot .click. Internally, it checks locator results to an exactly one element. First of all, one element is exactly there or not an element is properly visible an element is a stable also like is not animating or completed animation any kind of animation is completely done on the page or not for that particular element all the receives element as if not obscured by the other element like obscured means it's not overlapped or it's not hidden by some other element or something like that like element is properly visible and all the received element uh, events like click event or on click events are properly done or not. An element is really enabled, not in the disabled state, right? Then once all these checks are done internally, then only it will click on that. So if they have given this particular table also, it's a very interesting table that they have given. Let's see for, I really want to perform a dot click. So these are the various actions internally or actionability check list internally, it checks. So to click on a specific element, its element should be visible, element should be stable, receives events also completely done, and element is enabled also. Obviously, editable is not applicable for the dot click. Editable applicable for the dot fill or dot clear. Same thing if I really want to enter some value, then what we do, locator.fill method that we use. For locator.fill, what are the different checks? Internet will check. Element is really visible, plus element is really enabled. An element is really editable. It is internally checked. Editable means so that I can enter the value there. So for example, let's see if you go to uh, this particular application and I really want to enter something here in this particular first name, something like that. Then in that case, element should be properly visible. An element is editable also. That is what it is actually showing. Visible, Enabled, it's already enabled, it's not disabled. And then editable also means I can enter the value here. That's why I'm able to perform the dot fill, dot fill, dot clear, right? Same thing, let's see for a screenshot. <clears throat> for a screenshot method, it's checking element is really visible and then stable so that I can take the screenshot of that particular element. Same thing, let's see for double click, set check, tap, uncheck, mouse over, drag and drag to for all the different varieties of actions that you can perform. And on the basis of that, they have created this particular table over here, right? So we don't need to write any specific code and all those things. It's by default auto weight mechanism available the moment you perform any action on the locator. But remember what is the default timeout value in Playwright and see this last line. It auto waits for the relevant checks to pass, like all these checks are done. And then only it performs the requested action like dot click, dot fill, dot clear, whatever. If the required checks do not pass within the given timeout, right? Actions fail with the timeout error. So let's see whatever the given timeout that we have given. If element is still not available, it's not like it was element is not visible. Let's see for next five minutes or 10 minutes, or it's not available forever. Maybe there is a bug. So it's not like for infinite time, it's going to check that element is really visible or not, right? So there should be a specific timeout, like 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 30 seconds or what? So the default timeout by default in Playwright is 30,000 milliseconds. You can say 30 seconds there, right? So remember that 
I'll show you practically also that we will prove that what is the default timeout value in play, right? That is 30 seconds. So within 30 seconds, element is visible. Perfect. After 30 seconds, element is still not there. Okay, fine. Let's throw the error, timeout error there, right? So what we will do, let's see, we will go to this application and then uh, let's say I really want to perform some uh, click on this operation or dot a check operation that I really want to perform here. I want to select this particular checkbox. So dot check method we can use. We have seen in the last couple of videos also, this located dot check one suggestion that I told you that how to handle the checkbox and everything. So check is visible, stable, receive events enabled. So all these four checks are done, then only it will click on it, right? So let's do one thing and let's go to our script here. And this is a simple script, let's see that I have written. I'm launching this application and then check. And then I'm creating one CSS selector over here that input name is equal to agree terms. You can check it here that input name is equal to agree terms. So obviously element is, the moment element is visible, I don't need to apply any weight here. Automatically it will check there. So let's quickly run it and let's see, is it really working or not? So browser is getting launched and here you can see that it's waiting for this particular page to be loaded on the page. I have not written any kind of a static weight here. And then yes, absolutely working fine after selecting the checkbox. But now I'll do one thing. I'm deliberately making it failure. I'm making it one one here that name is equal to agree terms one one. And I really want to check that. Is it really waiting for 30 seconds or not? Right? So let's see, right click on it. And then again, run ad. Let's see, is it really waiting till 30 seconds or not? So browser is launched and uh, in fact, for browser launch also, it's going to wait for the 30 seconds. Now it has reached here to the checkbox. See, it's not giving me the error immediately. It's waiting. Can you see the wait? Asynchronous call is happening here. Wait, wait, wait up to 30 seconds is going to wait. And after 30 seconds, obviously element will not be visible here. So let's wait for 30 seconds and then it should give me the timeout error on the console or here. Nice. So it's giving me the timeout error. Can you see that the test got failed? Test timeout for 30,000 milliseconds exceeded. And after that also element is not available here. So that's what the timeout error. It's clearly written here that timeout action fails with the timeout error. Perfect. Now. So what is the default time? The default time for the playwright is 30,000 milliseconds. But can I change it? Yes. So there are various ways of changing it. We can do that here. So see this carefully. You can just apply this method page dot set default method or set default timeout method. You can use it. Then it will do what? It will just override or it will just update the default value. That is 30,000 to 50,000 milliseconds. And now again, I'm deliberately making it fail. So what will happen? Page dot set default timeout method will do what? See this, this is coming actually along with the page set dot default timeout here. This setting will change the default maximum time for all the method accepting timeout option, right? So whatever the method, which are accepting the timeout option in play, right? And then now the new default timeout value will be whatever the value that you are giving it there right so let's use this and then here i'm using that uh, let's see 50000 millisecond right and now again i'm running it so this time i'm running it this time it should give me the error but not after 30 seconds it should give me the error timeout error after 15 seconds because now we have overridden here now the latest default timeout value is 15000 now we have reached to this particular element at line number 18 step then it's going to wait for 15 seconds over here. And then after that, it should give me the error. Let's see that. So see, it is still waiting. And now can you see the timeout error is done? And then saying that uh, timeout 15,000 milliseconds exceeded. Same thing, same error also. You are getting it here. It says that, okay, waiting for the element for this particular locator. And timeout is done after 50,000 exceeded. Millisecond exceeded means 15 seconds exceeded over here. So now this is the one way that we can do it here, right? But let's see, let it be 30, uh, 30 seconds only. I'm just going to comment it out. If I really want to override, I can override here like that. But let's see 
uh, now the default is 30 seconds. So I'm writing for our uh, <clears throat> note point of view, our reference point of view. Here I'm writing that, okay, the default timeout is equal to 30 seconds, or you can say 30,000 milliseconds. But I don't want to wait for 30 seconds for this particular element. There in that case, for every action that you are performing, you can give your own timeout also. So how to give that? Simple write timeout, colon. And whatever the timeout value that you want to give in milliseconds, you can give that. Let's see for this particular checkbox, I just want to wait for five seconds. So I simply say 5,000 milliseconds here. You don't need to write MS or milliseconds here and that's it, right? So in that case, if I run it, what obviously it will give me the error, but it will give me the error when after five seconds, it will give me the error because I don't want to wait for 30 seconds or 15 seconds. Right. So let's see this. It's reaching at line number 19 now, and it's going to wait only for five seconds. And after five seconds is giving me the error. Can you see that timeout timeout 5000 milliseconds exceeded waiting for that particular element is still not found. That's why I'm giving you the error over here. Perfect. So for every action that you're performing, dot click, dot fill, screenshot, for every method, there is one timeout optional parameter is available. Can you see that timeout with question mark? Question mark means this is the optional parameter. It is not <clears throat> mandatory to pass here, right? So you can just simply define whatever timeout for a specific element you are looking for. So let's say you're writing a test here and there are different 10 steps you are writing. 10 different steps you are writing, page.locator, page.locator. For one locator, you just want to wait for five seconds, but another locator, you want to wait for 10 seconds, but another locator, you just want to wait for, uh, let's see, two seconds, but for fourth locator, you just want to wait for the default seconds. So default will be 30 seconds will be applied over there, right? So that also the individual specific action also, you can define the timeout here, right? That is the third thing. Next thing is that, let me, let it be like this, again, back to, 30 seconds is a timeout right now, but at the global level, if I really want to use for all the tests, because it's not the only test that we are writing, because if you write this particular line number 14, set default timeout 15,000, it is applicable only for this particular element, right? Sorry, it's applicable only for this particular test, not for other tests. But what if tomorrow I'm writing, let's see one more test here, a couple of other tests also. So I'll do one thing. Let's write one more test over here. Right. So let's see auto wait check uh, number two. Right. And let's write one more here that auto check number three. And this is let's see number one. So three test blocks that I have written. And let's see all the three blocks are having this exactly same test. But I don't want to write this one and this one and this one every time. See all these are commented. Right now, by default, timeout is 30 seconds. But now if I really want to set a global property for all the tests, you can enable this particular configuration. Also that at the beginning itself, you can write test.use action timeout, let's see 10,000 milliseconds. So this will, this will set the action timeout to 10 seconds for all the actions in, in your test. So for all the action means for every step, 10,000 milliseconds will be applied for each and every test here, right? So now I'll do one thing. Let's run it. After 10 seconds, it should give me the error. So let's run it and let's see. So three tests are there. So see the first test. Okay. See, it's waiting for the 10 seconds. And after 10 seconds, it should give me the error here. See, it's waiting here at line number 19 for the first test. Okay, done. And then the test is actually getting failed here, right? So we executed only the first one. Now you can execute the second one if you really want to execute from here. For second one also, it should wait only for 10 seconds. So again, let's see at line number 22, we are executing from here. Let's see. So see, now again at line number 30, it's going to wait for 10 seconds only. Why? Because we have given this global timeout over here, right? And after 10 seconds, it should give me the error. Same thing here, 10 seconds for the second test block. See, auto wait check number two here, and then they're still getting failed here. And timeout is exceeded, right? 10,000 milliseconds is giving me here. 
perfect. So that is also absolutely working fine. So this is always a good practice. If you really want to overwrite globally, you can do like this also here. Perfect. So I'll do one thing. Let's see if I try to run everything from here. So see, run test in the current file. I want to run all of them together. So run test in current file. It's say three tests are running in the parallel mode here. You can see one, two, and three. Okay. So all of them are working together and uh, all of them will work for the specific uh, step. Here you can see that waiting for 10 seconds here, waiting for 10 seconds here, and waiting for 10 seconds here. And all of them giving me the same error, 10 seconds, 10 seconds, and 10 seconds here, or 10,000 milliseconds, you can say here, right? So all of them are giving me the same error here. You can see that, right? So yeah, this is also a really good option that you can do it whenever you're writing a script or in your framework, you're developing something like that. Action timeout is also a global test timeout for all the tests for each and every action in the specific test or in all the tests, right? And one small thing, let's see now again, I really want to write. Here I'm writing the timeout is, let's see 5,000 milliseconds once again. Only for this particular test, I'm writing 5,000. So what will be, how much time it is going to wait for this particular element in this auto check number one. In auto check number one or auto wait check number one test, it is going to wait for five seconds. But for this, it's going to wait for 10 seconds, right? So let's see that again. So now this five seconds will override this particular 10,000 millisecond for a specific test. Remember, the preference now will be given to the specific, the specific timeout that we have given for the specific element here, right? Okay, so let's run it again. Run test in this current file. So again, three Chrome browsers are getting launched, but for the first one, it should give me the timeout for after five seconds. Let's see. Okay, so let it run. And let it complete, then we will see the error. So first one, you can see that, yeah, it's showing 5,000. And for two, it will take 10, 10. So perfect. It's, you can see clearly visible here. See for this guy, 5,000 millisecond. For this guy, 10,000 millisecond. And for this third one, 10,000 milliseconds once again. Perfect. So I hope this is clear now, right? So at the time of interview, these kind of combinations people might ask. In fact, you can also use in your real-time projects also. Plus, always remember that this particular table, that what are the different checks before performing any action on the specific locator or the specific element by playwright or from the playwright. First, visible, stable, receive all the events, enabled and editable. After that only, it will perform the action. And what is the default timeout in playwright? That is 30,000 milliseconds or you can say 30 seconds here. Perfect. So that's all for this video. I hope you liked it. If you like it, please subscribe to the channel. I'll continue with a lot of good videos are coming with respect to playwright and TypeScript. Let me know in case of any issues in the comment section. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care and God bless you always.